It's a bull. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. What an absolutely lovely day we have here in South Florida. And uh, for what it's worth, I do not have a South Florida live cam up here. I've got uh, one of the springs up in uh, the central northern part of Florida, but I was looking at it this morning. Look at the amount of tarpon, the amount of different wildlife. These are alligator gars. These are pretty much freshwater fish mostly, brackish somewhat, and they grow up to four and five feet long. And of course, uh, you know, if you're a fisherman, you know that these are tarpon down here, uh, which are oddly, you know, they go into the freshwater areas too, because this is a freshwater spring here that feeds into the ocean, I believe. So you've got kind of a brackish water, uh, but got some tarpon floating around there. Uh, man, look at that. Again, you don't see that very often. Alligator gars, tarpon, just saw a big manatee swim by. Florida is a beautiful place, man. I'm telling you, in many different ways. Well, you can watch that camera yourself. It's called the Underwater Manatee Cam at Blue Spring State Park. Not quite sure where that is, but wherever it is, I'd like to go visit there sometime. Take a look at this wonderful cam. Well, let's look at spot prices this morning and see what's going on. And uh, <clears throat> uh, markets back up. Coin says a bull. And it uh, looks like it is kind of a bull. I think my coin, when it ever pulls, it's always pulling up a bull all the time. I suspect that it's what I call my long-term coin. <laughs> so, uh, let's look at the uh, highs and lows today. We're going to go over a few different things. We'll take a look at the 24-hour market, stock market. We'll look at some uh, uh, the, what the cryptos are doing. Uh, I've got some questions to ask about uh, uh, mining stocks, because I know a few folks out there like mining stocks, so i got some questions to ask some of my viewers as well. We're going to talk about manipulation, uh, one of my favorite writers out there. And uh, a guy right here, one of the hardest working guys in the uh, uh, YouTubers, one of the hardest working uh, YouTubers in precious metals, in my opinion, had uh, an opinion here he was sharing about uh, being deleted comments and stuff, something I've noticed myself, uh, kind of a weird thing, but maybe explainable. I don't know. Well, um, boy, isn't that just so cool to look at? Sorry, I didn't mean to take you back to that page, but uh, look at that alligator gar. I thought they were kind of predators, but I guess they get along with the snook, or not the snook, but the tarpon. And you know, these tarpons can get up to six feet or longer, I think, as well. They get huge, man. Um, all right, it's not a fishing show, so <laughs> let me look at the uh, spot markets here, which are kind of boring, kind of sideways right now. Good opportunity to buy the dip. As I've said for a long time, um, I believe that uh, uh, you're going to look back at sub $2,000 gold and sub $30 and $40 and $50 silver one day and sub $1,000 and $1,100, $1,200 uh, platinum and say, man, that was cheap. I wish I had bought more. <laughs> uh, that's my opinion. However, history has kind of proved that my opinion is correct. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, the ranges here, 1773, 1793, about a $20 uh, range right there in the overnight markets. Again, we'll look at the 24-hour uh, charts. Uh, currently sitting around 1789, 1790 from all intents and purposes, near that $1,800 mark. Uh, silver uh, bopping all over the place, 2267, like it does, that's what it does. Uh, 2267, uh, high of 23, and currently sitting at 2279. And of course, this is all the silver market being down, which again, this down market for you newbies out there, don't panic or anything like that. that as I've talked about, if you watch yesterday's video, many of my videos in the past, uh, this market is manipulated. We all know it. Everyone knows it as plain as a nose on our faces. Uh, however, if you don't play, you can't win. So the ultimate goal here, the ultimate thing with gold and silver is that they, it'll never go to zero. As much as these fuckers try to manipulate it and move it up and down, it will never go to zero. And in fact, uh, the way I like to look at the gold and silver, and you've heard me say it a billion times already, and I'll keep saying it a million more times, a billion times, <laughs> is that uh, gold and silver are on a roller coaster to the moon. There's going to be some big dips in this ride, and they're going to be frightening sometimes, and you're going to get a pit in your stomach uh, on, on, on the roller coaster. But the ultimate destination you, is the moon. That's where, that's where this roller coaster ride ends, is the moon. All right. <clears throat> what is the moon? Well, the moon is uh, when uh, uh, governments finally decide to go back to a gold standard, which isn't going to be for a while. So the price of gold and silver is just going to constantly rock it up for a long time. Uh, and I'm sorry, what am I saying? It's not going to be for a while. I don't think governments will ever go back to a non-fiat system. Uh, it's, there's just too much money to be made in it for them, and uh, they can spend endlessly. But I digress. Uh, let's look at platinum here, 937 and a high of 958. Uh, we're getting about $20 spread there. Good opportunity to buy the dips, folks. Again, as I've been saying for a long time, 
uh, you know, if you're a dip buyer or you're, uh, you're not bought in all the way yet or you've been thinking about buying, uh, again, great opportunities, in my opinion, uh, uh, to buy these dips. Uh, let's take a look at the 24-hour spot prices here with gold. I'm going to do a quick, well, this looks like it's been refreshed. Let's take a look at where the monkey hammer, well, actually, that has not refreshed itself. Let me see if I can get that to refresh here. And there we go, 919. Well, of course, you can see in the if gold is not being monkey hammered as much as silver, and that's a, no surprise to many of you folks out there that buy silver and watch both of these markets. However, wherever gold goes, silver will eventually follow, and gold is not an upward trajectory. And as much as these big, short commercial positions are trying to monkey hammer the price of silver down, uh, they're going to have a real difficult time. Uh, my understanding is they're still looking at an eight, collectively, the uh, big short commercials are still looking at an $8 billion loss thereabouts. If they can drive it down to 1800 and, and get out of those short positions, they're at an even, a break-even point. Um, but that's not the case right now. Or they can get someone to take over those short positions for them. Uh, that's why I like to read Ted Butler, by the way, Butler Research. And I'll show you right here. Um, I subscribe to it. Any of you guys out there that uh, do gold and silver on a daily basis, my machine's running real slow here. Um, maybe it's the internet connection, but Butler Research LLC. Highly recommend that you, uh, you can read some of his stuff for free. He does, uh, well, let's see, he has an archive right over here. Where is it? Well, no, it's free archive. You can hit the free archive on Butler Research. It shows some of the older stuff, but gives you the basic idea. And uh, Ted gets into the, you know, I talk about the manipulation from more of a, uh, a macro viewpoint, you know, uh, more of a work man, working man's viewpoint. But if you want to know the technical aspects of exactly what's happening and how this manipulation happens, Ted Butler is certainly, as far as the silver manipulation goes, one of the, no, is the best, in my opinion, out there. The best guy out there explaining how and why this happens. Uh, let's take a look. Let me see if I did. Yeah, we did uh, up, update that. Uh, gold kind of in the sideways market, 1780, kind of moving up to that $1,800 line where it will be again here soon. Uh, and it will pull up the price of silver with it as, as well. Uh, so not a lot going on. Here's the New York, you know, if you follow, whoops, sorry. If you follow this, see where New York opens right here where my cursor is. And if you go straight up, uh, that's the New York open. The green line is today. Uh, the red line is uh, yesterday's markets. And you can see that the monkey hammering did occur in New York, but it was closer to about 10, 10 o'clock or so when they really dropped the hammer on it. But not a big deal. Again, great opportunity to buy the frickin' dip. Uh, let's take a look at 24-hour silver price here. And uh, 22.90, let's see kind of where we, all right, here's where we are right now. And of course, where is it happening in? New York, New York. Uh, I hate New York sometimes. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, uh, their market, the COMEX market, New York NYMEX market, is crooked as a day is long. Run by CME, by the way, in the CME group, and that is my opinion. Bunch of crooks that are running that casino. Uh, but no less, uh, Silver Spot uh, gone down here. It looks like, uh, yeah, where are we at on Silver, actually? Oh, 22.80. Good opportunity again, folks, to buy these dips. We're off of that $25 mark we were about a month or two ago. And uh, that, again, that's good for you in the buying, you know, for you guys out there buying. Uh, as far as uh, folks waiting for it to, you know, I noticed one thing. People are so impatient with silver sometimes. It's like uh, they expect it to go up. Like, well, I just think there's impatience in general with investments. People like to, you know, they like those uh, investments that go up on a 45 degree line. You know, it's like get rich quick mentality. Uh, and then they usually jump into it and lose money. You know, fear of losing out, I guess, FOMO too. Fear of missing out, I guess. Well, here you go. Silver prices getting whacked down in New York NYMEX markets. Go figure. Uh, but it's only temporary and again cr provides physical people a great opportunity to buy physical metal at a little bit lower price, nothing substantial. Um, as far as where we're going from here, I mean, I just don't know. I mean, we could see, you know, some people are saying, uh, uh, you know, they're thinking they'd like to see sub $20 silver. Um, I, you know, I'd like to see it in a way too because I know it won't stay there long. Again, it provides a great opportunity for me to build up my inventory at a lower price. So. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me. Uh, for you new folks in precious metals, don't panic, folks. Again, this is a roller coaster ride to the moon. So the ultimate, unless you jump off at the dip <laughs> uh, and lose your money or, or not make any gains, uh, your ultimate destination is upwards. And again, these, th this market is not a get-rich-quick market. It's mostly about wealth preservation. And uh, when it does get into its bubble territory and gold and silver do, like every other market or will, uh, then's your opportunity to try to 
uh, time that high. And usually uh, the high in gold and silver will be when uh, everybody and their brothers invested in gold and silver. You know, the, you, the, the person that cut your hair is telling you that they just bought gold. So, um, well, hold on, they're actually doing that now. So I don't know what that means. I think people are waking up. All right, I digress. Let's uh, move into, again, buy these dips, folks. Don't worry about it. And, and, and who am I to say don't worry about these dips? Well, I'm a guy that's been doing this full time. Uh, well, I started working for my father's business in 1977. And actually, I, I worked for him before that in the summers as a little kid as well. So I've been around this rare coin and I've been around the precious metal physical markets uh, for all my life pretty much. You know, since 1977, I started working for my father, opened this place in 1995 on my own. And uh, again, I, I've been watching gold and silver markets since I was a little kid, almost on a daily basis, five days a week. And uh, you know, like that kid in the Bruce Willis movie that sees ghosts, uh, I see patterns. <laughs> so I can see patterns and things. Again, I've done it long enough. I guess if you've done something and watched the market as long as I have, you do spot patterns. And the one thing I can guarantee you guys out there, especially you new folks that get a little nervous on these downs, relax, just buy the dips. Again, that's my opinion, and I think my opinion has good historical data to draw from as well. Uh, let's look at the market watch and uh, just to see what the Dow, I don't usually look at the Dow too much, but there's been a lot of activity in here. And uh, it's been my belief that uh, uh, in 2008 when the uh, stock market crashed, uh, gold and silver did go down with it. Some people, a lot of people felt it had something to do with people covering margins on other stuff. Um, but I'm not quite sure why, nor do I care. All I know is that shortly after, you know, when it did crash, with, gold and silver did crash with the 2008 stock market and housing crash. Well, all, everything across the board crashed. The paper part of it did. When it came to buying physical gold and silver in 2008, uh, when everything else crashed, guess what? Uh, delivery times were months out. Premiums were almost as much as the uh, price of silver itself. Um, so there were, oddly enough, when the prices dropped, there was no silver available. Does that make sense? No, it really doesn't make sense. It just shows you what a sham the COMEX, CME, and London uh, paper markets are. Uh, but again, I digress. Uh, and the reason I'm looking at stock markets a little more closely now because I do expect a paper price to fall in gold and silver if we see a big stock market crash. I mean, it's just, you know, I believe it's going to happen. And uh, again, it'll provide a great opportunity to buy the dip if we can find physical. That's a big if. If we can find physical and if we can find it at a decent premium. Uh, we're not at that point yet, but again, I'll be watching the uh, stock market a little bit closer uh, for a couple other reasons, too. One of the ones I want to get to you is that I'm going to start investing in stocks, bonds, miners, technology, consumables, and that's kind of a new area for me somewhat, folks. So I might want to get some uh, suggestions in uh, the comment section when I'm done here, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, let's look at Bitcoin. Uh, back kind of bounced up from its low back up to the uh, 57,000 mark again look at this volatility folks I mean I don't have a stomach for this volatility and uh, you know and, and you you could make a case that it's possible that Bitcoin might also be a roller coaster to the moon but man this is this roller coaster just act absolutely would give me a fucking heart attack so <laughs> excuse my language and the other thing too is that I, I can confidently say that gold and silver are on a roller coaster to the moon, and you're going to see the dips, and you're going to see some uh, uh, gut-wrenching dips occasionally, too, in this market, and we always have over, you know, over the course of history and over the course of our lifetime, decades, even years. You're going to see big dips, but the ultimate destination is the moon. The problem with Bitcoin and these things is they don't have a track record. Uh, and the other thing, too, it really is a man-made thing. It's really a man-created game, uh, so to speak, or a man-created algorithm or whatever it is. I mean, it's cool. It's got a lot, but it's not, well, I don't want to say it's not money. It is not money. We know that for a fact. Uh, is it, it's a very highly speculative investment that some people have made a lot of money on, especially the early adopters and the early, but that's like every market out there. The people that are in early usually make the most money, even in scam markets, you know, even in the tulip market. The people that got in first on the tulip market made millions, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, uh, and again, I'm not calling this a tulip market. What I am saying is for the Bitcoiners out there and the crypto people, you know, you're, you're, you're putting the uh, 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 cart before the horse or something to the, along those lines. I forget what. You're putting the cart in front of the horse. You know, you don't have, cryptos do not have a history yet. They don't have a, a history of data, a history of usage, a history of acceptance. Uh, it is a fairly new technology, or not fairly new, extremely new technology without a historical background that uh, is highly volatile. And can you make money in those markets? Absolutely, you can, folks. And for anyone that's ever confused me as a crypto hater, um, no, I'm not. I just understand it for what it is. 
what I am is realistic, okay? Uh, and, and, and it is not money that's being realistic. It uh, is a brand new technology in the scale of every other form of money or fiat or whatever you want to call it, uh, even compared to gold. Uh, although nothing compares to gold and silver because gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years, never gone bankrupt, outlived countries, corporations, and you name it. Bitcoin uh, and these uh, uh, markets right here are in their infancy. Uh, they haven't proven themselves in the slightest bit yet. They're just, you know, maybe this one might be a decade old. But let me get out of there and move into something else I want to talk about. Um, you know, I'm a gold and silver guy. I own a lot of gold and silver. I'm a hodler like most of you out there. However, however, when gold and silver gets to be its peak, when it gets to the top of the market there, um, I'm going to have to say that uh, uh, I'm going to move, you know, not have to say, I want to put some money into stocks and bonds. I want to be diversified as well um, and, and get into, uh, you know, when there's blood in the streets, that's when you should be buying. So I'm thinking I'm waiting for this big stock market crash to go out and buy some good, uh, uh, good stocks and bonds. And let me, I want to get some questions from you because I know some of my viewers out there uh, do uh, uh, buy the miners, involved with miners. And I've got to tell you, I'm kind of ignorant on it. And you'd be helping me. I'd like to see in the comment sections what your favorite miners are. And uh, if you could give me some technical reasons why, uh, I'd kind of be curious. I'm looking at a few up here. AG is one of them, and I got the Seeking Alpha. I just did an upgrade, and which is kind of nice because I can plug in different stocks and bonds and see how they're, not stocks and bonds, stocks and, and miners and all that stuff and see how they're doing. Um, and uh, this was interesting. This is uh, AG would be, uh, oh, it's that mining company up in First Majestic Silver Corp. I was really surprised to see AG is at high risk of performing badly, learn why. Uh, again, this is on Seeking Alpha, which I think is a pretty good site. Uh, if any of you are familiar with why uh, they might say AG First Majestic Silver is uh, uh, at high risk of doing badly, uh, let me know. I'm kind of curious. I got them on my list only because I've seen people talk about uh, First Majestic out there before. Oh, crap. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to uh, uh, drop that off. Let me go back over to here. And I'll show you what other miners I was looking at. I was kind of, kind of looking at the international miners. I think this is one of them. That's Wheaton right there. Uh, they're one of the big ones. A friend of mine told me about them a long time ago. Uh, but I believe FNLPF, which is uh, Fresnilo, I think that's a Mexican company. Uh, Industrious Panolas, I think it is, is also a Mexican company. And uh, Pan American Silver, I believe they're out of Canada. But I was thinking primarily these two Mexican silver miners right here. They seem relatively inexpensive. I looked at their charts, and uh, it seems that relative to where they are right now, they have been double and triple in price, and they're in, you know, not too far off from uh, uh, today and uh, they look like they have good potential but anyways I this is not my forte so hey comment away folks if you know if you're familiar with these different things and let's share some stuff uh, let me t read this article this Matthew Pippenberg is, is actually he's like a, a, a brother from another mother as far as our thought processes go and the way we look at the world again from what I've read of him I really like this guy a lot if I was able to write this is the kind of stuff I would write so he's gold Switzerland I'm not quite sure what they do but um, you know they're another gold dealer um, and if you live in their area, you know my, my, my view. I know they want outside business, outside the local area, but you know me, stick with the local guys, folks. Keep that money local. Uh, but no less, if, if I lived in Matthews, I'm a dealer. If I lived in Matthews, uh, neighborhood, I'd go by just to buy stuff from him and thank him for his good articles. So <laughs> but let me read what he uh, has to say here, because I kind of think he's exactly right. Uh, again, he writes like I wish I could write. And, uh, it, and again, same thought process as myself. So let me share what uh, his feelings are. Uh, from gold manipulation to DC's latest lies, absolute distortion continues. Absolutely correct. Thank you. Uh, and again, I'll try to refrain from making my own personal comments. Let me, <laughs> you know that's hard for me to do. Let me take a quick sip here one sec. Hmm. Below we look at the latest official fantasies from DC as well as some same old big boy manipulation, gold manipulation tricks meant to keep precious metals markets anything but free or neutral. From dumb to dumber, let me blow this up a little bit. Whoa, a little too much for me. Oh, that's good. I can read that. From dumb to dumber. In a recent report from the Hill, we discovered that uh, uh, this current administration's advisory team is now accepting that inflation is not only a financial reality rather than a transitory blip, but far more important to them, a political problem. Uh, and this is absolutely true. You know, nobody gets reelected in a recession or a depression or in a time of heavy inflationary times. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't happen. 
Uh, it will come to no surprise that many politics and politicians are driven by re-election, not candid honesty, and certainly not economic expertise or even rudimentary grasp of financial uh, history. Unfortunately, for the self-preservation driven dunces helming our financial Titanic, wow, I called it the Titanic, that's what I call it. Uh, the math of inflation can no longer be masked with more words. In short, given rapidly falling polls, the White House has to rev up its inflation strategy. DC's comical inflation strategy is, and if you're hoping it's going to be an effective strategy, well, please, don't hold your breath. <laughs> Man, I could write this myself. Uh, in fact, uh, we promised that we were not making this up. Uh, this administration's answer to the inflation problem, uh, which is driven and defined by too much money in the system, boils down to this, spending and creating more money. Really? Yes, really. <laughs> he even answers himself like I do. Uh, the economic advisors actually maintain that the uh, new administration's spending package will not add to inflationary pressures and effectively pay for itself. As I like to say, that's rich. Uh, if anyone on the White House staff took economics in high school or read a single case study or prior inflationary cycles, they would know better. But for now, the lords are hoping that the serfs won't know any better either. And uh, I'm going to add my own comment in. You know I have to. Uh, we are the serfs, folks. And, uh, you know, if you're watching my videos and you're watching any videos like this and you're reading um, Matthew Pippenberg stuff, uh, you're much smarter than the average bear here. And you won't get sucked in like the average bear does. Uh, but folks, here's a spoiler alert. Expanding spending and expanding money creation is the very essence of inflation. Uh, and then again, as we warn for months, politicians say one thing and mean another. No shocker there. And as we've also warned for months, inflation is what these desperate policymakers are after, despite public signaling to combat the same. To repeat and worth repeating, inflating away debt is and was their only plan along the way. Hmm. Makes sense because uh, this is something that uh, you know I, we've discussed years, decades ago. Is that the only way for them out of this to is, is inflate their way out of it? But uh, let me continue here. Uh, DZ's history of putting political lipstick on financial pigs. Uh, but in case you think lying to cover up a bad plan is something unthinkable in the corridors of D.C., let us harken back to that other political and financial disaster, otherwise known as the Iraq War, as a simple lesson, an additional case study in D.C. fantasy over facts. Um, as early as 2002 and well in 2003, the following list of advisory double speakers repeatedly told the world in the White House that the war in Iraq with its oil-rich resources would pay for itself. You remember that, folks? I remember that. I remember how Rumsfeld and all those people were telling, hey, it'll, Dick Cheney, and everybody, it'll pay for itself. Uh, <laughs> well, anyways, hang on. Mm. Making my throat dry. Uh, this list includes well-known luminaries of deliberate dishonesty. <laughs> That's Richard Pearl, Glenn Hubert, Lawrence Lindsay, Ari Fleischer, Paul Wolfowitz, Ken Pollack, Don Rumsfeld, and Dick Cheney. As for paying for itself, the war in Iraq costs the U.S. well over $7 trillion. And that's being conservative. Uh, as for those who paid for this, if you are a U.S. taxpayer, then the answer is we paid for it, folks. We paid for Iraq. We paid for that $7 trillion, okay? Uh, and again, who did it? The morons in D.C. Both parties. Sorry, but it's true. Uh, but as Cheney defended, hey, at least we got $14 billion in, this, in international assistance, which would be like me tossing your penny to assist you in a purchase of a luxury yacht. Uh, luxury yacht. But as all students of failed regimes have learned in history class, the extreme cost of extended wars unless paid for with taxes, think Truman in Korea, are the first inflationary domino to fall before those same nations and their currencies implode further down the road. Same spin, different story. Uh, returning to the familiar paradigm of spin coming out of the Biden advisory team, we see that nothing has changed when it comes to replacing hard math and simple truth with linguistic fantasy and political whitewash. Uh, in short, this administration's latest plan and spending plan won't be paying for itself. If you are wondering where the money to pay for the new spending plan is coming from, let us be blunt, we don't have it. The U.S. doesn't have the money, folks. Uh, even the most recent report from the Congressional Budget Office confirms that the, this current administration's social safety net and climate change legislation will increase the budget deficit by $367 billion, a little over a third of a trillion dollars, okay? But in an era where money can be created with the, with the you know, a Fed, Central Reserve uh, uh, Bank mouse click rather than a productive economy, what's $100 billion here and $100 billion there? In other words, it'll come as no surprise where the, new, the, the needed new money will come from out of thin air. Again, such an open and insane combination of increased fiscal and monetary stimulus is by, def by definition inflationary, period, full stop. 
That said, there's no denying that more spending and stimulus as set forth in the current administration's plan will inflate nominal GDP to some extent, which might help offset some of the pain of the tax receipts not being sufficient to cover interest expenses on Uncle Sam's obligations, the IOUs. Uh, but regardless of what the GDP upticks come in land of global reserve currency, let's be more honest than DC's politician or economic advisors. And more or less, uh, God, this is, this is just stuff we've been talking about for years now. Uh, and even before I've been doing this video, I've been talking about this stuff for years. And, uh, uh, you know, they're not, they don't have the tax receipts, folks. You know, most states are doing really poorly. Florida, Texas are doing really great because they've opened up. They got rid of a lot of the ridiculous mandates. Uh, and business is back to normal down here. So is life is back to normal. But most of the country, most of the world, this is not true. And, uh, uh, again, uh, the tax receipts are going to be suffering hugely, um, you know, especially when people start to decide to go GALT, uh, which is the next step that I see, people going GALT. I think I'm seeing low paid wagers going GALT right now, and if you're not familiar with the term GALT, stop the video, put it, type in G-A-L-T under your, your search, and you'll know instantly. Um, let's take a look down here, more gold tailwinds, specifically the only way to borrow and buy more GDP is in a new scary world where inflation rips well intentionally ahead of controlled interest rates. In short, all of the foregoing is just another way of saying yet again that all twisted roads point toward negative real rates, exactly. You know, and this is a good point that he makes here because, you know, they talk about, you know, the talking heads in corporate media and the uh, talk, you know, the supposed experts. By, by the way, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, uh, and those big corporate uh, publications, when they talk about gold, they're fucking clueless. They really are. They haven't. They must hire some high school student that just got up out of, uh, 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 you know, uh, journalism class or something because they're, they're, they're really stupid when it comes. I don't know if it's purposely or they just don't care or they think they know what they're talking about. Corporate media is clueless when it comes to gold, folks. And one of the big things that they point out, and I don't mean to stop reading the article here, is that, uh, oh, you know, if the, if the uh, uh, Fed starts raising rates, that's going to take money away from gold. Uh, well, no, it's not, folks. Just simply raising rates in a, in a in meaningless little points, you know, a point here, a quarter point there, whatever the hell they're going to do just, just to give the illusion that they're raising rates. They can't afford to raise rates. First off, it'll cause the U.S. government to go bankrupt. It's a fine line. He points it out perfectly here about uh, um, negative real rates, okay, as currency insurance in a world drowning even deeper in an ocean of debased dollars, all right? Uh, and here we go, corporate media. Media spin complementing political spin. Meanwhile, the mainstream medium, which by every poll, metric, and dinner conversation is becoming more and more of an open and distrusted joke by day, desperately continues lying at the same pace as the policymakers. That is, they keep telling the world that inflation is merely a supply chain rather than a broad money supply story, and hence, not to worry, nothing to worry about here. You know, keep walk along. Uh, instead, the fear porn pushers of the corporate owned and politically directed MSN want you to worry more about the endless war on the critter and its uh, crittered variants. And much like the endless war on terror, it has become a wonderful pretext, bullshit excuse actually, to pursue more inflationary policies while pretending virtuously to combat the same. Thus, as Austria shuts down and Australia loses its mind, even Germany is only a small step away from further lockdowns ahead. Uh, of both the, uh, you know, those have gotten it and those have, have not, which by every honest measure of, of uh, the cases spread among the back, you know, those that have it, essentially makes both categories a distinction without a difference. Um, yeah, read that article. I don't mean to say it, but I'm just trying to uh, prevent videos from getting stuffed. Uh, but more lipstick on more pigs. And again, whatever one's individual view of the uh, critter policy, we can expect more controls and constraints from on high whose impact on the global economy, in addition to everything else going sideways, anything but growth tailwind. As controversial and political as opposed to science-based lock, these, uh, you know, uh, closures continue, a growing number of otherwise flat earthers are leaving the workforce. Uh, and these flat earthers he's talking about, right here, the latest number for the month of September alone confirms that 4.4 million U.S. workers simply quit. Well, remember what I said about going galt? I mean, think about this, and again, this is a thought on my point. Uh, most of us think of, of rich people uh, going galt first, but maybe it's possible that the low paid and the poor were going to be the first to go galt. Think about that. Uh, again, let me move along here. Uh, and, oh, he says again, too, like I do. <laughs> and regardless of the individual views on mandates and uh, uh, these things, we can all agree that they will add to supply chain and economic disruptions, which just adds more fuel to the inflationary fire we've been tracking all year. 
and the gold, gold manipulation continues. Of course, no discourse on faking it, lying it, lying or market distortion would be complete without a quick look at the latest artificial boot to the neck of rising gold prices. And okay, this is where he nails it as well. As you've likely noticed, manipulated gold prices recently lost more than $45 in price in the last week. Uh, also taking down silver with it, but let's talk about what he's talking about gold. What you might have noticed is why. No mystery. It boils down, and this is why gold went down, and also silver was taken down by the COMEX thieves, uh, the big short uh, commercial position, commercial banks, uh, and COMEX, CME, allowing it to happen. Uh, it boils down to some mysterious entity. Remember I've been talking about this? Uh, he says, i.e., central bank, dumping $1.25 billion worth of gold futures twice in less than a minute each uh, on that oh-so-nefarious web of market price fixing, otherwise known as COMEX. So, you had some mysterious entity, and it's probably a central bank, like he says, dumping $1.25 billion worth of gold all at once. You don't do that unless you're a complete fucking moron, folks, or your purpose is to drive the price of gold down. That's the only two reasons you would dump that much that quickly. You're either a fucking moron or you're purposely trying to manipulate the price downward. And I know what the answer is. It's number two, purposely trying to manipulate the price down. In other words, the same policymakers who lie to us by the day are spending their evening hours practicing gold <laughs> manipulation. Oh, he nails it again. Uh, their motives are simple as their means. The emperors with no clothes are terrified of honest price discovery in gold and silver for no other reason than such honesty would make a mockery of the lies that otherwise pass for sovereign currencies. As always, we know such tricks can't last, but it's flattering to know how terrified the liars are of the truth. And despite gold manipulation, we still see gold's history. Remember, what he's talking about history here. Gold has a history, folks, a long history and a solid one. Uh, we see gold as history's most honest asset. Amen there, brother. Uh, soon the truth as well as the gold price will prevail as it always does. Uh, great article uh, by this gentleman right here. Again, uh, brother from another mother, uh, writes like I wish I could write, but thinks like I do, uh, or I think like he does. Okay, Matthew Pippenberg, thank you, sir. Um, I wanted to talk about something, too. I don't talk about other YouTubers, but uh, uh, this guy, Salivate Metal, I've seen him many years. I think I saw him uh, when I, uh, I kind of was looking and looking at different videos out there when I started doing my own YouTube videos. You know, we're all in this boat together, all the guys that do precious metal bit videos, so it's, it's, it's nice to, you know, be supportive of each other and everything. But uh, uh, one of the things I, I, I looked at on Sal, and by the way, uh, Sal, Sal at Salivate Metal is probably one of the hardest working dudes in, on YouTube, in Precious Metals at least. This guy posts uh, numerous amounts of videos and a uh, hardworking guy for sure. Uh, don't really watch a lot of videos, not just his, but other videos because again, I do this for a living every day. I've been doing it since I was a kid. Uh, it's tough for me to go home and just watch videos all night on something I do every day for a living. Uh, but I have watched some videos out there and I have watched a few and, and I, like, I like the uh, enthusiasm that Sal brings to his videos as well. Uh, but he brought up a, a point here that I saw that uh, uh, you have been deleted, which caught my attention, showed up in my feed, and uh, says, you have been deleted. And uh, Sal talks about, uh, he feels like there's people been deleting comments, you know, comments out of his comment section, and that this could be creating some uh, problems. Uh, Sal, I want you to kind of know that um, you're not alone in thinking that YouTube has some algorithms out there that kind of screw us when we talk about particular subjects. I find that probably to be true about, uh, you know, me going into the political and economic topics I do. Some people say, well, why do you do that? Well, it has everything to do with gold and silver. You know, politics it will drive the price of gold and silver up or down. So will economics. So we need to talk about this stuff, even if it doesn't seem directly related. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, YouTube and uh, uh, obviously Facebook, I was thrown off. I had my account on Facebook for 12 years. I was thrown off there. I was accused of being a hateful and violent person. And uh, everyone I've told that to says, really? You're anything but, you know? So uh, what it is is they, if they don't like what you have to say, they don't like your opinion, they stuff you or they delete you. And you're absolutely right about that, Sal. I'm not sure how they're doing it or what they're doing it, but if you're, talk if you're making subjects that they're not happy with, they will delete your ass. Uh, or uh, uh, stuff you down in the rankings for sure. Uh, but no less, uh, uh, I've not noticed any th problems with my comments out there, you know, people uh, 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 not being able to see their comments. Uh, I think I have uh, uh, deleted a couple really nasty people out there, but that's about it, you know, nasty trolls. Uh, but 
you know, funny enough that Sal brought this up, I have another account, a YouTube account at home, uh, like a personal account, not the business account that I have here, that uh, I went and looked for my comments on my own video because I placed a comment. None of my, my personal comments show up on my video. So there's something weird going on here. Can't argue with that, Sal, that's for sure. Uh, so uh, anyways, uh, I encourage other people to go out there and look at uh, uh, other people's videos. And Sal, you are the hardest working uh, video uh, silver guy out there for sure. Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, hey, listen, I normally don't talk about these kind of things, but I want to point out uh, uh, an article that I saw on ZH. And I want to, I, I just had to say this, uh, the ash, you know, A-S-H. Uh, you know, where you put your ashes at, the giant hole that you sweep ashes into. <laughs> Ash hole of the week, and I'm going to tell you who that is in my opinion this week. It's this man right here. Um, look what he said. Look what he said. Is that just fucking incredible that that man would say something like that? Uh, my God, I never liked him too much before. In, in fact, uh, he's just another one of those corporate media talking heads. You know, it, you know. It, He's great when the market's going up, everyone's a fucking genius, especially Jim Cramer. He's a fucking genius when the market's going up, but he missed 2008 collapse. He missed all the collapses. Uh, so, you know, everyone's a genius when the market's going up, especially talking idiot heads like this. But uh, when, it, when the markets are going down or sideways, that's when you can prove your mettle. Uh, this guy never has, in my opinion, but I don't have nothing nice to say about him now. Uh, let's look at some other articles here on... Uh, uh, on uh, uh, ZH. By the way, ZH is free. You can read it for free. I have a subscription service just to get rid of all those annoying ad pop-ups. Uh, but again, you can read all these articles for free yourself. I would definitely put it on my bookmark bar. Uh, this, this site is way more reliable than Wall Street Journal and uh, Bloomberg, that's for sure. Uh, and that ain't saying much. I shouldn't say that. But uh, ADP signals modest slowdown in job gains in November, uh, despite easiest market lab uh, uh, labor ever. Um, yeah, think about that, folks. I just think that, you know, you know, you know the uh, going galt is a term from the uh, Ayn Rand's, uh, Ayn Rand's uh, book, uh, Atlas Shrugged. And uh, uh, I think I got through the book. <laughs> so I wasn't too, I didn't like the love story part of it too much. But the uh, economic part and the society, you know, this part about society was very, very powerful. And uh, she talks about uh, in her book, uh, going, uh, going Galt. And you know the, the typical thought is that the people that will go galt will be the uh, the rich people, the billionaires will go galt, which could still happen and likely will happen. Look at Elon Musk. Elon Elon would be the first guy I think we might go galt out of all the billionaires out there. Uh, but you know, no one ever thought, what if the middle, or not the middle class, but what if the working class went galt? You know, that what if the working class is the one that go galt? All right, uh, but. <laughs> kind of forced into it. But you know, if the working class goes galt, they're going to be on government payrolls. Uh, they're going to be sucking off the government. It'll just make the government go broke quicker. And uh, maybe it'll end this stupid uh, uh, mess we have in D.C. We can reshuffle every congressman and senator in D.C. and get new ones, uh, people that actually care and know what they're doing. Uh, let's take a look at future surge after power driven routes to be transitory. Um, uh, let me see if there's any gold articles. I'm going to kind of just, isn't that awful, man? You know, people that, pff, that's just awful that you would do something like that, especially to the elderly. Um, these people are draconian frickin' dictators. Uh, is it time for Eurobanks to start worrying about Turkey again? Oil to balance, I think so. Uh, good, that's good, glad to hear that. And uh, sad, don't want to see, who is rattling swords with Russia, man? What the F is going on here? You know, the last thing we need is another fucking Cold War. Uh, lived through one already, don't want to see another. And uh, again, you can thank your, your idiot uh, industrial war complex in Washington, D.C. and the people that support them for this, as well as the global uh, war hawks out there, ass fucking holes, excuse my language. Um, well, I'm curious to see what goes on in this trial here. All right, let's move along here. It's just mostly political stuff and nothing I really want to talk about, stuff that we're all sick of, uh, more than likely. And what is this? Um, oh, somehow. I ran through a couple videos. All right, I'm going to take a look. <laughs> I love yesterday's kitty cam. Take a look at those guys. They are fun to watch. Uh, let's take a look at yesterday's video was Making Money with Fear. I'd like to thank everybody for watching it and uh, commenting. Um, hit the thumbs up, too, by the way. You know, I'm not too happy about this. YouTube, there's my video. They took off the like button. I mean, dislike button. You know, I don't know about others out there that do YouTube videos, but uh, I kind of like seeing, even publicly having that uh, uh, number of dislikes displayed. And you know why they took it off? They took it off because uh, the dickheads in Washington were getting so many dislikes 
that they couldn't just remove their dislikes. They had to do all of them to, to not make it look like they were doing it just for the dickheads in Washington, D.C. Um, <laughs> anyways, God, you couldn't write this stuff if you tried. Uh, thanks for everyone for watching. I'm going to go down the line here and see if there's any question I can answer here. Give me one second. Um, true. Again, I'm going I'm to stick to specific uh, uh, questions on precious metals and topics that we've talked about. But I, again, I'd like to acknowledge everyone here that's made comments. I can't argue with. I read all your comments as well. So uh, uh, um, uh, it just makes it. I just can't go over everyone bit by bit. But I'd like to thank everyone. Agree with that. Uh, hey, look, I got uh, Willie Bob from uh, Lake Macquarie, uh, NSW North Southwest, uh, okay, I'm sorry, Australia. Hey, dude, what's up, man? Uh, I feel for you, brother, man. You poor folks down in Australia, you really got uh, uh, politicians doubling down on stupid down there, man. Uh, but no less, you know, be a free person and uh, do what you're going to do. And when elections come around, remember that. Hey, Gritty, what's up? Uh, good, keep accumulating out there. And uh, Honesty says, not offering commentary for or against Bitcoin, but the fact is no one, no one has bought Bitcoin before at previous all-time high, has lost money if they held. So to say Bitcoin is not a store value is not a true statement. It's a weak position to take best without going further down the rabbit hole. Well, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole a little bit. And uh, you know, you're right. Uh, so, so to say that Bitcoin is not a store of value is not a true statement. I'm not saying it is not a store of value, uh, especially if you got it. I mean, actually, we just talked about this uh, about 20 minutes, 10 minutes ago in this uh, video here itself. But just to reiterate, um, you know, it, it doesn't have a track record yet. It's so new that you can't really say it's a store of value. We don't know if it's going to go to zero soon. I mean, you have to have a track record in order to be looked at as a legit type of uh, store of value. And unfortunately, um, the, the cryptos just don't have a track record yet. They have a track record of extreme volatility. Uh, and again, you're absolutely correct. If you got in early, you're doing fine. Um, so again, I'm just reiterating what I said a little bit ago. And uh, if you're watching, you already know my opinion on this. But thanks for watching on, on 3's T. Don't confuse me as a hater. I understand it, what it is. I'm a realist. Uh, but again, I don't think it is a store of value yet. I think it's a highly speculative asset. And uh, for those that play in highly speculative assets, I commend you, especially if you make money. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, let me go down here. Thank you. Yeah, kittens are interesting, Celeste. Uh, how to read gold charts. Oh, yeah. I was asking uh, out there how to, not how to read gold charts, but how to, oops, sorry about that. Um, and let me go back down to where it was. I was asking in yesterday's video, not so much how to read gold charts. I know how to read the gold charts, but on the charts, it doesn't display on the overnight market. It doesn't show you, well, was that trade done in New York Globex or was that trade done in the Hong Kong market? It just shows you the, the ongoing line on the graph. Uh, I'd sure like to see where these trades occur occurred uh, in the evening. You know what I'm saying? Uh, during evening markets when you've got multiple markets open, like N NYMEX markets, uh, London, uh, or I mean uh, Hong Kong markets and stuff. Where are these trades occurring? Uh, that's what I'd like to know and how to find that out. Anybody knows that, let me know. Thanks, James. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's see what else we've got going on here. Uh, thanks for watching. appreciate it. And uh, Joey, you, you might have some idea on some silver. You say junior silver mining stocks. Make a comment there. Let me know what you have. Uh, kind of take a look at it myself. Maybe it's a, something we can have a discussion on someday. Uh, silver, you know, online here or on the uh, 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 comment section. Uh, hey, no surprise, I made a purchase. Hey, good for you, Lou. Appreciate that. Platinum all day. Uh, do I think silver will close the year below 20? Um, I don't think it'll close the year above 25. Um, you know what? I got to tell you, I don't think it's going to close below 20, and I don't think it's going to go above 25. I think we're kind of range bound for a little bit. But, you know, as we get closer to the holiday season, we could be surprised either way. Uh, I suspect more towards the upside than the downside. But then again, that's my opinion. I'm not a big short term analyst on this stuff. Um, you know, I just know where we're headed, and we're headed to the moon. Uh, hey, G, what's up? And uh, Silver Bull, I'm happy with lower prices, me too. And I did record right before Powell spoke. I saw that. I saw that line just go immediately downward. <laughs> uh, Powell speaks, and the uh, gold and silver markets uh, are, are going to be uh, fucked, you know, fucked with, pardon the language, but manipulated for sure. That's when they like to do it. Well, hey, listen, 
If you hit that like and subscribe button, please. And uh, I'm Brian Kuzmar. I'm a uh, long-term precious metal dealer here in South Florida. I own a brick and mortar store. If you don't live in my immediate area, I can't deal with you, unfortunately. However, I appreciate you listening to my videos. And one of the things I can do is uh, please go find yourself a local dealer, a good local coin store, a good local uh, precious metal dealer, a good handsome, smart guy like myself that's going to take care of you and give you good prices. And like myself, it's going to beat Atmex, SD, and JM Bullion. On the, on the commonly traded bullion products that you should be buying, not the overpriced shit you shouldn't. Um, and again, those are the, if you don't live in my immediate area and you don't have a local coin store and you live in the uh, bum F nowhere <laughs> uh, and you're stuck and you have to, well, I'd like those come. Atmex, JMSD, just pick up your favorite there. And uh, again, uh, uh, we advertise ourselves to beat them and so should your local dealer. So a lot of you shouldn't have to use an out-of-state dealer to buy precious metals. You should have a good one locally if you take the time to find it. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Going to close it out. Hope you have a wonderful day. Looking forward to the weekend coming up. Can't get here quick enough, and I know it's only Wednesday. Uh, we'll see what happens. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.